This is a Louis T. Network exclusive. Who else could it be? For me, your me, Louis T. Welcome. You are in the lab room, of course. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me. On the 2016 NFL Draft Prospects 101 series, your guide to some of the biggest and hottest names of the 2016 NFL Draft. We're talking tight ends, and this is a guy that I am enamored with in this draft class as a tight end. However, for all of the good that he brings to the table, there are so many things that are potentially going to stop this guy from maximizing not only his draft stock, but his ability to play at the next level in the next football league. I'm talking about Western Kentucky tight end, Tyler Higby. Here's a very talented football player with some issues that may stop him from being selected in the 2016 NFL Draft. Let's talk about the pros, however, and, and talk about why I like this guy so much when I watch the tape. 6'6", 249 pounds, so you're essentially talking about a 6'6", 250 tight end. Good size, good length, a long, rangy, athletic tight end. Really good movement skills as the first pro. And this is a guy that moves around better than most tight ends in this draft. To be honest with you, I take him over just about every tight end in terms of movement skills. I take him over just about any tight end in this draft class. He's that talented as a tight end in terms of athleticism. He's better than Hunter Henry. He's better than anybody else you can come up with. Even the, the guy out of South Carolina, Jarrell um, Anderson, he, he's better than most of these guys. But Anderson, I believe, uh, he, he's, to me, a very good athlete for his size at that position. He reminds you more of a Jimmy Graham type of guy. You flex out and, and he becomes a mismatch nightmare for you. He's more of what this NFL is than a Hunter Henry or Alex Van Nett. So, in other words, he's what the le league is trending to right now. A guy that is long that you flex out, put him in the slot, and have him win against linebackers, have him win against safeties can, on a consistent basis. And so, uh, very good movement skills. Tremendous body control and usage for Tyler Higby. Again, another one of these guys that I don't know if basketball is in his background or not, but when you throw the football up to him, he does a really good job of boxing out defenders, contorting his body, to be able to adjust to the football in the air and come down with it. Seen a number of times on tape where he's contorting his body and, and redirecting the way he has to catch the football, redirecting his body to get in a position to put his hands out there and catch the football and still coming down with it. So tremendous body control and usage, knows how to box guys out and give him the best chance to catch the football. Savvy route runner, and another one of these guys that wins at the top of a route, and when you can win at the stem of a route, that's that's a golden act, that's a really golden attribute for a tight end, to be honest with you. With quarterbacks looking for tight ends on specific plays and routes, if you can win at the stem of your route, you can win just off of route running ability. And not even have to worry about your athleticism, but if you have that, that's an added bonus. Quarterbacks love that because it makes the windows that they throw into that much easier. It allows them to be able to trust that this guy's gonna win. I mean, when Kirk Cousins drops back to throw, he knows Jordan Reed is gonna win. So he doesn't mind waiting that extra second because he knows when I have to deliver this football, even if I gotta take a shot, I know my guy's gonna win. Tom Brady feels the same way about Rob Gronkowski. For years, Philip Rivers has been throwing up balls blindly to Antonio Gates because you expect that guy to win. And to me, Tyler Higby is one of those guys, you just expect him to win. And when you have that kind of confidence in your tight end, it changes the game when you're a quarterback knowing that my guy's going to get open and win and I'm going to be able to get him to football. Very savvy route runner. Can get vertical. And unlike some of these other tight ends that I've talked about, Nick Van Ed or Hunter Henry, he can get vertical. He's a guy that is athletic enough that if you, uh, look, if you're not as athletic or if you fall asleep, he's gonna run by you and you may not catch up to him, okay? Unlike uh, Hunter Henry, unlike 
a Nick Bennett where most likely someone's gonna track him down. This is one of those guys, if he gets loose in your secondary, you could be in some trouble. This could turn it, uh, a 15 yard corner route could turn into a 55 yard touchdown catch and run. Okay, he's got that kind of athleticism, he's that kind of problem in your secondary if unguarded. Okay, if he's unmolested and he's running around in your secondary, you have a problem on your hands. Can be flexed out, and I talked about that at the top of this breakdown. And he's one of those guys that he can, he can line up tight to the line, but he's probably going to do his most damage flexed out into the slot or out wide, especially in uh, red zone situations where, you know, a lot of these teams these days like to flex that tight end all the way out wide, get him against the safety or linebacker in a one-on-one -on -one situation, throw the football up. And we're talking about a 6'6 target here. So he can go up, I point the football. That's going to be a problem and a mismatch for most safeties and, and linebackers in this league. So that means teams are going to love the flexibility that you get with a guy like Tyler Higby that you can flex out in routes and have him be a mismatch for most defenses. Yaxter, he's the type of guy you throw the football to and, and not a lot of make you miss, but he's quick and athletic enough that when he catches the football, again, he can get up the field, make some things happen, and get yards after the catch. Outstanding hands. He's another one of these dudes. And with this tight end position, I've seen a lot of guys with really good hands. I, I haven't seen a guy, I haven't run across a guy yet that I was displeased with his hands and there were a lot of drops. He's another one of these dudes. You throw it in his general vicinity, he's gonna find a way to come down with the football. So to me, he's got outstanding hands. Very trustworthy. You throw it up to him, either he's coming down with the football or nobody's coming down with the football. Catches it in traffic number of times in the end zone. There was one game, he took a hellacious shot in the end zone, still came down with the football. Again, if you got outstanding hands, catching the football in traffic as a tight end just comes with the territory. It's a part of the job description. If you're a tight end, you're gonna take some shots. Quarterback's gonna force it in there to you. You've gotta be ready, willing, and able to take some shots, but still hold on to the football and Tyler Higby is no different than any other tight end in that regard. You go to his cons. Injury history, left knee problems, had surgery on it. That's something that concerns a lot of the scouts uh, around the National Football League is his knee and the injury history that he has and having to have surgery and having to miss time. I think that's something that people feel may be chronic for him. So that's right there a red flag, a medical one in itself. You go to the next con, needs work as a blocker. I think he's willing to block, okay? And that's something that I like. If you're willing to block, if you show me the effort, then I can show you how to get better as a coach. It's the guys that don't want any part of blocking that, that scare you a bit. I think he's willing to block. He's not very good at it, I'll tell you that much. Not a very good run blocker, but he's a guy that will try. And so, at the next level, they'll probably figure out that he's probably not gonna be the best blocker in the world for you. And that's not gonna be his niche at the next level, but you're gonna try to coach him up, and I think he's willing to learn and, and put the effort necessary for it to potentially get better, okay? Not all guys come into the league as good blockers, but when they leave the NFL, they're much better than when they came in. He could be one of those guys, but right now, not a very good blocker at all. The biggest con here, though, is the one that could stop him from not only getting drafted, but even having a real career in the National Football League. If he can't keep his life together off the field, there could be problems for him. I still would love to see someone take a chance on him in the draft, and again, all it takes is one. But I'm going to tell you right now, not a lot of leeway for a tight end with injury history and off the field issues, okay? Not many teams like that, okay, with a tight end. They're willing to overlook it for a premium position. You're a cornerback with a little bit of issues off the field. You got kicked out of your program, but you're 6'2", and you're really fast. Hey, I might be able to make a, a roster spot for you. I might be able to take you with one of my selections. Hey, you're a pass rusher, got a little bit of a checker pass, like a Frank Clark. Ah, don't worry about it. We'll overlook that. We'll select you in the second round. That will happen for the premium position players, okay? For a tight end, dime a dozen. Not necessarily. I'm not looking to pick up a guy with a second degree assault, public intoxication, and fleeing and, and evading uh, of police. I'm not looking for a guy that's doing all of those things. Now, all of that happened all in one sequence, one uh, series of events in one night, but 
nonetheless, in the story surrounding it, seems like it's a, a really plausible situation. I mean, if someone's messing with your girlfriend and, and potentially groping your girlfriend, you're gonna have a problem with that individual as well. So I, I totally get it, but you gotta find a way to stay out of trouble. He wasn't able to do that. And so if this comes at the wrong time, right around the draft. It's not a good look for Tyler Higby. I can say that right now. And so not really a situation that lends itself to him getting selected in this draft. But like I said, someone will sit down with this kid and if they feel like he has a gripe with that whole situation, they feel like the knee is okay, and they like this kid and they sit down with him and they think they can get through to him, he may be selected, but I'm telling you right now, it does not look good for Tyler Higby, but there are a lot of things to work here, work with here. And if you're talking about an athletically gifted tight end in this draft, you're talking about Tyler Higby. So we'll see if he can overcome all of the red flags, whether it be medical or off the field problems. He's got a lot to explain. If he can come, overcome those things, he could be an asset for some team in the National Football League in the 2016 NFL Draft. That's Tyler Higby and his Draft Prospect 101 Series Breakdown. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here in the lab room. Come back and join me as I continue to break down the National Football Football League. I'll see you next time. Still got some more tight ends to discuss. Until then, Louis T signing off. There's plenty more where that came from. While you're here, subscribe to the channel. If you want more Louis T, be sure to follow me on Twitter at In The Lab Room or you can like the Facebook page at In The Lab Room. That's In The Lab Room on Facebook and at In The Lab Room on Twitter. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.